Well, folks, what do you think about revisiting the topic of wearing swords on the back again? Pretty much every channel that makes sword videos has talked about this topic at one point or another. Usually it's been wearing a sword on the back is mostly just fantasy, it's not practical, here is why. I want to take a look at the potential benefits of it and how you could pull it off. And first off, let me start with one example of it being done in history that there's reasonably good evidence for. Some Celts, and I, I emphasize the some here because in general Celts wore their sword on the waist, just like everybody else. A lot of Celtic sword suspensions look like this. But there are a few finds in the Yorkshire area of graves where you actually find a sword behind somebody's back. And that in and of itself wouldn't be enough evidence, of course, but there are also these chalk figurines that clearly show... Yeah, they show that. But they also clearly show a sword on the back mounted that way. And that fits with the, the position of the sword in some of the burials. So at least in this particular culture, warriors in a certain time period apparently did that. Uh, how often? How many? Who knows? But as I said, this topic has pretty much been debated to death. If you're interested in the historical aspects of who did it, maybe, uh, who didn't, all of that, and there, there's plenty of other videos. You, you can look that up elsewhere. So I really want to take a look at how you could do it. Now, I don't have a fancy workshop or even just a garage or a wide selection of tools, so I had to improvise um, crudely. Uh, this is a pretty short scabbard that I, that I have lying around. This is the, the widest, stiffest belt I have. And, uh, well, then I improvised. I put this on. Just a little bit. You see, it's on my back. Rests across the shoulder. I can adjust a little bit depending on how vertical I want it. But this seems about right. And now... I can draw this just fine, very easily. Now, this is, of course, not a long sword. I don't have a Celtic sword either, but Viking sword would have to do for this. And uh, I can actually resheathe this on my own. There we go. So, the trick here is that it's only, like the blade is only partially in there. If the, the scabbard went all the way to my shoulder, I would have trouble. Because then, you know, this, my arm isn't long enough to draw it from all the way over here. So that the, the point wouldn't clear. Let's see if I can sheathe this a little quicker this time. There we go. This is similar to the way it's shown in these chalk figurines. That's what I was going for, actually. So there you see that the sword is just connected at the belt. Now, of course, the, the figurines lack detail, so we don't know the exact specifics of how it was put there, and, and also the, the scabbard and any suspensions, wraps, etc. are not preserved, so we don't know exactly how they did it. It would have to be definitely some stiff material to make sure it doesn't tilt too much. So I, I had to tweak this a little bit because at first this would just sag down like this. The way it is now, it still sags a little bit. You could certainly improve that. But I mean, even, even if it slides down here, it's not ideal, but it's not too terrible. And I can still draw just fine, and this is pretty easy. There are, of course, some problems with that. One, because the blade is not fully covered by the scabbard, it doesn't do what a scabbard is supposed to do, among other things. It's supposed to protect the blade from the elements, prevent it from rusting, it's supposed to cover the edges. You could probably come up with some kind of solution for that. Maybe you could have 
you know, just kind of a, a tube of softer leather that you can, you know, when, you, when you sheathe it, you pull that up and you tie it there so you can still pull that out and you can still you know, draw it without a problem because that's flexible then. It would be a bit more of a pain in the ass to resheathe it, but it could be done. But uh, it's, of course, a lot less convenient than just having the sword in the entire scabbard here. Uh, there are some other considerations as well. Mike Lodes in his book Swords and Swordsmen speculates about why they may have done that. It may have to do with the fact that they used chariots on the battlefield, so having the sword on the back as opposed to the hip may make it easier to mount and dismount a chariot, especially if you just hop on it and jump off as it's, it's moving around. Uh, so that could be a factor. The other thing could be the shield. Again, keep in mind this is not universal because, as said, most Celtic warriors wore their swords the way other cultures did, but you know, it, it can come in handy to have a sword on the back when you have a large shield. This can be a, a pretty convenient way to, to actually draw the sword, but at the same time you should also keep in mind that it's easy to overstate such practical problems. Like, when we're talking about the Romans, for example, and the Celts too wore the, the sword on the right side as opposed to the left, which they did in later medieval times. Why? Because the shield is in the way. Now, in the way depends on what you mean. Uh, if you just hold the shield in front of you, it's not impossible at all to draw the, the sword. Even if you're in formation and there is somebody left and right of you, it's not really that difficult. You can very much draw the, shi uh, the shield, draw the sword from behind the shield in a number of ways and then use it. Uh, but if you think about carrying the shield and the way the Romans did it, the, the poor soldiers actually had to carry the scutum in the hand as they marched, which must be a giant pain in the ass. So if, if you imagine you march and march and march and just hold the shield here, if you've got this kind of deal going on, it's a little bit annoying. So it would definitely be better to have the sword on the right side. Now, why not on the back? Well, the problem comes when you, you want to carry supplies. If you have a backpack or you, you, you carry anything else on the back, it may not be so easy to combine that with a sword, unless you have a specific uh, scabbard attachment on your backpack. Now that could be an option. If the, um, the half scabbard is on the side of your backpack and the sword is it's just sitting here, you could still be able to, uh, to draw that. You could gain some benefits from having a sword on the back. I mean, for one, Sword on the on the waist, depending on the suspension, yeah, it can be a little annoying sometimes. If it's well done, if the straps are all properly aligned and can be adjusted and everything, it's not really that much of a hassle, but it's still there. On the back, it's more out of the way. You're not going to bump into somebody else's scabbard and cause a duel that way or whatever, and uh, you're not going to bump into it with your legs or get stuck on it or whatever. There are various ways in which this is fairly comfortable to carry. Now you can nitpick, and I have done that in one of my older videos where I talked about the topic at first, where I pointed out, you know, oh, you're so exposed when you do this as opposed to that. But I mean, when I really think about it, when I try to be a bit more aware of my personal bias here, the difference seems to shrink. I mean, this is still pretty quick. I mean, this really doesn't take long before you're in some sort of fighting stance. And this cutting from the scabbard with the European sword isn't terribly effective. You can do it, but because it is not a curved blade intended to be used with this sort of slicing cut, it's not going to be quite as good. So the difference between this and that isn't really all that substantial. I mean, we're talking, what, milliseconds? 
this is not going to make the difference between you get murder right there and you can successfully defend yourself. There have also been other arguments like you can't sit down with a sword on your back. I mean, sitting down with a sword on your hip isn't very easy either. If you try to sit down on a bench, yeah, this is not going to work. You have to take it off. Plus, in, in most scenarios, be it historical or fantasy, you would probably be asked to leave your weapons at the door when you enter a, a tavern or something. So probably you wouldn't even have it on you. So there's, there's a lot of little nitpicks that you can come up with that wouldn't really be that hard to work around. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't advocate wearing a sword on the back exclusively. You know, especially for long swords, you, you would have the, the scabbard would have to be so short and you would need to come up with a more sophisticated suspension so it does not do this kind of number. So there are definitely some cons. Obviously this is not suddenly a great way to carry a sword. But you know, I have changed my mind in the sense that it doesn't seem quite as impossible. I think it's important sometimes to keep in mind the hindsight bias, if you will, looking at history and then just arguing, well, this is what they did. They did it for a reason. They didn't do it the other way because, well, it didn't make sense. That's why they didn't do it. So basically circular reasoning, if you will. So this isn't practical because they didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? Because it isn't practical. Now, in some cases, you know, they didn't always make the perfectly rational decisions. Case in point, the Hundred Years' War. France against the English longbowmen just didn't really adapt. They kept getting decimated by longbowmen and they were outraged. How dare they? How dare these commoners kill our noble knights? This is completely outraged and this is dishonorable and this is not the code of chivalry, etc, etc, etc. But they didn't deal with it. They, they just they continued with their traditional charge of knights and men-at-arms and they kept getting decimated. And if they were always 100% pragmatic, they would have adjusted a lot more quickly. So there may very well be other ways to do something, but they just didn't do it because of cultural restraints, you know, the, the mindset, the zeitgeist, if you will, of the time. Please don't misconstrue this as me trying to make an argument that they did this in history more often than people believe. No, 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 no. This has nothing to do with how often they did it. It was rare in history. There are a few examples, like the, the Scots supposedly did it, uh, at least sometimes. I wasn't able to verify the source on that, just like with a few other claims saying that uh, Thai swords were sometimes worn on the back and some people in India supposedly did it sometimes, but again, I couldn't find good sources for that. There's an article that mentions these things, but unfortunately it doesn't reference them, so that's always a little dubious. So that's a completely different discussion who did it and how often and all of that this is really more about would it make sense at all? Would it be possible at all? And yes, it would definitely be possible. There have also been some modern solutions. There have also been some modern solutions that have back scabbards that are mounted in such a way that you can draw the sword. And again, it depends on the length and all that. So basically where there is a will, there is a way. So it's not completely ridiculous. What is ridiculous, however, is the way that back scabbards are often shown in, in movies and video games, where the scabbard goes all the way up to the shoulder. So the only way they can do that is start to draw it, cut away, next cut, oh, sword is in the, in the hero's hand. Or, you know, in games where just the sword clips through the scabbard. So that's cheating. That would not work. A fully enclosed scabbard just can't do it. There are other ideas, like having a magnet on there that you can just kind of clip it onto. That could potentially work. And um, yeah, I, I would generally say if it's some kind of wandering mercenary or adventurer or whatever, the most likely scenario seems to be a scabbard on the side of the backpack because they would have a backpack anyway. And then you may be able to come up with something that allows you to draw it from there. And you would definitely have to maintain it more frequently because, as I said, the blade is exposed. So definitely not an ideal solution. Personally, I'd stick to wearing the sword on the hip, the old-fashioned way, if you will. 
But yeah, that's about it. So I hope you found it entertaining. Thanks for watching. Check out the links in the video description down below. And have a good one, folks.